Welcome to Dangerous Prototypes. I'm Ian. Today I'm going to do an EEV blog style first person unboxing of this equipment we sent ourselves from Huachang Bay, the big electronics market in China. There's three boxes and we had these all shipped on Shippers Row, which is this one street in Huachang Bay where there's probably 10 to 20 shippers. And the sound of tape wrapping these boxes is deafening. They do everything they can to save on volume. So you see this first box, it's actually just cut up and taped back together. This, the lid to the box is just attached as a hinge. There's another box. I have a feeling this is the test rig. So this box has the test jig I had made in it. They wrapped it all up. They did all of the wrapping for free. All the boxing was done for free. It was included in the shipping price. Well, this is a stainless steel solder paste spreader. Looks like the blade has gone in a little bit. That was just three dollars or so. I hear people complain about the the rubber one, so I wanted to try the stainless steel one. So this is the test jig. It's a handle on top. You pull it down and it goes onto a board. So we went to a test jig factory and they sold us all these test points that you use with it from little pogo pens like this to do the actual testing to these big ones that actually fit in the four corners of a PCB. So for the test rig we have these test pens and we'll drill holes or laser cut a sheet for the bottom and they're springy. They go like that so you can hold the board by the holes onto the pin and it presses down onto the pogo pins for testing. We're going to use this to build some generic test rigs and try to standardize our stuff so it's easier to test. I actually I visited a test factory where I picked up all the points where they sold me all these bits. This is about 20 US dollars worth of various pins and these plastic ones that hold it from the top. Um, we went visited a test factory and got some tips and I'll write those up on the blog soon. Also we had some LED reels in there. One white, one color for shock. And next box. I'm guessing this is the reflow oven and this is the hot plate. So let's get into the hot plate. Okay, I'm guessing this one here is the hot plate, also all wrapped up in tape. So this is an electronic hot plate. It's not like the kind that you can't use in your dorm room. It's uh, specifically made for reflowing PCBs with service mount components. It's uh, digitally controlled, so you set the temperature and it shows the readout. I've not actually tried this or really had much experience with any hot plates. Uh, we bought an oven as well, which we'll open in a second. But I got this because lots of people like them. Uh, Lady Otta uses one at Out of Fruit. Uh, Akiba uses one at Freak Labs. And what it does is it gets really hot and you put your board on there and the components melt. And why people like it is because if things pop up, tombstone, go out of alignment, you can tap on the board and fix things as they go, and it saves you work later. This can also be used as a board preheater, so it kind of heats up really big components so they're easier to solder. But we have a dedicated board preheater on the way that doesn't get quite as hot and isn't as pointy on the edges. This was uh, 300 kwai. The list price is 300 kwai, which is about $50 US. Again, these are all the list prices. We bargained a lot with a calculator and got prices way, way down from there. But uh, out of respect for the various sellers, you'll have to do that bargaining yourself. Upside down.
Okay, so this is the free flow oven. What you do is spread solder paste on a board and then place some parts on it. Then you pull out the drawer, stick it in there, and close it up. And it runs a preset heating pattern that heats up the board, reflows the solder, and then cools it down again. This is a very small one. We saw this at Dimitri's office at Smartmaker. Uh, the same brand, uh, Quincy, which I've never heard of and doesn't seem very Googleable. Uh, Seed Studio uses the same thing, but uh, the m next bigger one, the same one the Malaysian kids took back to Penang with them. Now I opened this up and I found what appears to be little bits of plaster and tile. And I've got a little bit of damage here on the corner that I straightened out with pliers, but it's damaged on the inside too. It seems like the heating tubes, there's two infrared heating tubes that run along here. They seem to be intact. So I'm assuming it was a little bit of plaster or something from the tiles in here. It's actually quite heavy. So we'll fire this up in a minute and make sure it works out. This is also a tool I don't have a lot of experience with. So if I get a few runs out of it and learn how it works, maybe it'll be worth upgrading. What I understand is the two tubes that run through here aren't enough that you actually need much more. And so some of the heating around the edges of the board isn't complete and you really need to line your parts up with the bars in the middle to get a good reflow. So uh, that's the first batch of stuff shipped back and I will upload this and get to playing with the new toys. Thank you for watching.